Have you ever thought about the difference between a really cool knife design and a gimmick? How's it going, everybody? I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And today, back by popular demand, welcome back, Grail or Garbage, the series where I systematically and categorically rank and review knives to give you the context that you need to determine if a knife like this Chavez Redemption 229 Kickstop deserves a spot in your pocket. Does it deserve a spot in your display case? And yes, I would say that this is a display case worthy piece. It's a knife that I've reviewed. It's a knife I've given my final thoughts on. It's a knife that I've carried a lot, almost more than anything else that I currently own for the last 45-ish days. We've had it long enough to get really sink our teeth into this knife and to determine just how good it is. But how does it stack up on the leaderboard? Well, if you're wondering, here's how that works. We rank knives based on five categories. Those categories are materials, ergonomics, fidget factor, the lock, and then finally fit and finish. Each category is worth a max of 10 points. At the end of scoring each category, we will add them all up and then place it on our leaderboard where it will forever be known in infamy as either a grail or garbage. It's not garbage, but how good is it? Let's talk about it. So as it turns out, it's high time that we go ahead and rank this bad boy, the Chavez Redemption 229 Kickstop. This one has been a favorite of mine in the pocket recently, and I don't, I don't think there's been a day that I haven't enjoyed it. I think that it's a fantastic knife, but how does it stack up? Uh, this knife is $410, which means that to rank it, we've got to put it against our big baller edition knives on our leaderboard, which is the $300 plus category. And it's got some pretty stiff competition there. We've reviewed knives like the Sean O'Connell Mini Persian and the Eric Luther Orphan and the Midgard's Messer Thunrar. And so it definitely has some stiff competition and it's gonna be fun to see how this all shakes out. First and foremost, let's go ahead and start with the materials. So for the materials, this is a very simplistic design. There's two main materials. We've got M390 on the blade. We also have titanium on these handle scales. We have a titanium pocket clip and a titanium backspacer as well. It is running on ceramic bearings. There is no single-sided captive pivot. It is a D-shaped pivot, which is cool. Uh, nothing too crazy there. Now, here's the deal. Once you start breaking the bank as far as price goes, you know, these are the materials that you expect to see at this price point. And so it really comes down to how well done they are. And I've got to mention things like, you know, the stonewash bead blast finish on these handle skills. Um, I've got to mention the fact that Riot makes this. Riot does the Ultramar series for Chavez on his production line, and they do a fantastic job. They have adequate heat treats. They heat treat to the standard level of HRC that you want to see for any steels that they put out. And so you will pay a more premium price tag to get a knife made by Riot, especially one in a Ramon Chavez design. So I can't necessarily hold it against it. Uh, the materials on here are quite good between the titanium and the M390. Uh, simply put, it's going to be getting an 8 out of 10 for materials. Up next, we have ergonomics. How does it feel in these hands of mine? Well, I've carried this a lot, so I've had a pretty, pretty easy time to, to come to a conclusion about the ergonomics. We do have this little bit of a finger cut out here, but it's more of a swell, really, a suggestion, if you will, of where to put your hands. And it lines you up perfectly to rest your thumb in a saber grip against this sawtooth type jimping. Now, the issue that a lot of people tend to have with this type of jimping is, is that it can really easily become uncomfortable. The trick is, is that you want it to be wide and broad enough to accommodate you, whether you're wearing gloves or not. And in this case, they definitely succeeded. It's not sharp, but it has enough grab and enough depth where you can definitely get a nice controlled grip. Now, how about 
in a reverse grip. In a reverse grip, it works really well. Your thumb caps off here on the butt of the handle scales really well. And so in a reverse grip, it's going to feel good as well. Uh, furthermore, you can, of course, just hold it in a regular grip. And if you want to flip it up for some pull cuts, you can do that. Can you pinch grip it? Yeah, you can pinch grip it. It's not a, you know, it's not the best pinch grip ever, but it definitely works. The ergonomics on here are fantastic. I've never felt any hot spots. The pocket clip itself does not create a hot spot in the hand, which is perfect. And so it's functional. It works well. The ergonomics are good. I enjoy carrying it. I enjoy handling it. It's going to be getting an eight out of 10 for ergonomics. The next category is fidget factor. And guys, you know me, I like to handle my knives a whole lot, but fidget factor is more than just about how many deployment options that it has, because if that was all it was about, then I would say, yeah, it's got a flipper tab and it's over. Fidget factor really comes down to how much do you desire to hold and use and deploy this knife? Is it fidgety? That's what fidgety is. And to be something that's fidgety, it has to really come through in a couple different departments. It's got to have a good detent. It's got to have good lockup. It's got to be comfortable. Fidget factor encompasses a lot of things. And let's talk about it. This knife is extremely enjoyable to deploy. And that is because of the single deployment feature that it has, where most Chavez knives have a thumb stud. This one does not. It does, however, have this Lee Williams kick stop. They call this the kick stop because that's what it has. And it's more than just a flipper tab. This flipper tab has its own rotation. It is separate from the blade of the knife where most knives that have a flipper tab, like for example, on this guy, uh, this is the big knives osteo. The tab is part of the blade. It moves up and down with the blade. Cool. Um, and that's how 99.999% of flipper tab knives do it. This one is different because that flipper tab is not connected directly to the blade. It has its own rotation. And so when you flick it open, it disappears. The problem with most flipper tabs are that when you deploy them, you actually get them right here and it interrupts the ergonomics. So while some people might say, oh, that's a gimmick, uh, it actually helps with the ergonomics because there is no tab right there. It disappears into the handle scales after it deploys. And you can tell that I've deployed this a whole lot. And so that's great, but more, it actually has this really great acoustics. And I'm going to try to get this on the mic so you can hear it. It's very much a ratcheting type sound and that's very pleasant and enjoyable to my ears. It makes sense audibly and that's great. It's, it does the acoustics of a knife make a difference? Does knife ASMR make a difference? No, but that doesn't keep it from being really freaking enjoyable and also make it very addicting to deploy and to actuate. But listen, it takes the Redemption 229 to a whole new level because you get more leverage out of a kickstop than you do a traditional flipper tab. And so this fires out very, very nicely. And it's got quite a bit of leverage there. Uh, once I did fire this so hard that it actually flipped out of my hand, uh, not the knives fault, definitely my fault. I wasn't expecting to get that level of action on this knife and I got it. Uh, it is running on ceramic bearings. So that action is really nice and smooth. Um, it doesn't take long at all to break in with those ceramic bearings and more to the point, the detent is great. Can you fail this knife? Sure. But if you're actually trying to open it, you're not going to fail it. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort to open this flawlessly every single time. And while it's not completely drop shut, it's got enough weight behind the blade where it's going to guillotine close with a very slight flick. And that's pretty cool. Um, everything about this knife screams, pull me out of your pocket, use me, and scare the living daylights out of people in your vicinity. I enjoy it a whole lot. And that's a long way around saying it's going to be getting a 9 out of 10 for Fidget Factor. Next, let's talk about the lock. Now, the lock is important because without it, this knife doesn't function very well, correct? Now, the lock is two parts. First and foremost, it's the lock up. Is there any blade play left, right, down, up, or center? Absolutely not. The lock up on this blade is 
pretty much just as good, if not better than the lockup on any other knife that I've ever held. Uh, and that is to say that there is zero room for wiggle. There's no extra tension where I feel it kind of wanting to bend and not. Uh, guys, it's perfectly locked up and that's fantastic. Now, if you check the blade centering, you'll notice that that is also perfect. To achieve perfect lockup and perfect blade centering is excellent. On this frame lock, because that is in fact what it is, you'll notice that it has this cutout, which is extremely close to the uh, the other part of the handle scales. That's an extremely thin cutout line, and that's impressive. Most of the time, we see a bit more of a gap on lock bar cutouts. We see a bit more of a gap on lock bar cutouts, but not on this one. This one, it's very close to the rest of the handle scales, and that's nice. The lockout itself, we're looking at about 35% lockup, which is really good. It's probably why this lock is so solid, and that's great. Yes, it's a frame lock. Yes, we've seen frame locks many times before, but it should not keep you from understanding just how good the lock is on this piece. And for those reasons, it's going to be getting an eight out of 10 for the lock. And then finally, we're on to the very last category. The very last category is fit and finish. Fit and finish is one part design language, one part manufacturing skill. Like how well made is it and how well designed is it? That's what fit and finish is for the purpose of this ranking. So if we look at first and foremost, the design language, this is 100% a Chavez design. Chavez is known for his big, broad blades, his beefy handle scale. He is an American knife maker, so it shouldn't be any surprise that we have these slab style handle scales. I like the use of the skull clip, and a lot of people think that the skull clip makes it look cheap, but listen, when you see those gas station knives that have skulls on them, they're copying Ramon Chavez, not the other way around. Let's not get it twisted. Also, on an otherwise simplistic design, the skull clip really pops out and says, hey, this is a Chavez knife. And Ramon Chavez puts a lot of work into creating some legendary designs. Um, I really enjoy his maker's mark, the skeleton key. The skeleton key is just such a cool maker's mark. And I don't mind at all that it's on the blade. It's a pretty much an otherwise uh, neutral style blade. It does also have this logo right here, which is the Lee Williams kickstop logo. I'm fine with that too, because the kickstop is pretty damn great. This is a knife that it comes together so well. We have this swedge here at the top of this compound grind American style tonso, which is going to make it really great for piercing into things, but it's also going to provide some cutting relief when you're slicing through things. It slices through things very well. I have used this knife and I'm a big fan of how the blade was designed, especially the sawtooth jimping at the top, because that allows me to get my favorite grip really solid in the saber grip style. Now, typically Chavez knives are known for being chunky, overbuilt big boys. And while this one is def definitely no different, it is definitely a horse of a different color without the thumb stud, which is what you typically see on a Chavez knife. And without that there, it actually makes it a little more sleek, despite the fact that this is not a lightweight knife. This knife is, it's, it's a bit of a brick to be honest with you. And I'll go ahead and put the weight on the screen and let you decide if that's too heavy for you. But I'll tell you what, it's not too heavy for me. It feels appropriate for what we have here. Overall, I'm very impressed with the design language. The Redemption 229 is a legendary design from a legendary knife designer. And I think you should give him his props, especially when he collaborates with someone like Lee Williams to put a kickstop on here and really make the blade more slick. I'm very much enjoying this bi-directional satin finish. I think that's fantastic. The hollow grind is deep enough, but not too deep. The flat here is well done. The knife slices through things all the way to the tip, which is great. Often with this type of design, it'll slice really well on the hollow and then not at all on the flat. And that's not the case with this at all. It's a great user knife. I do wish that we had a single-sided pivot, but we don't. It is double-sided. Oh, well, I can live with that. But for example, we get T8 hardware all around. We get a backspacer, uh, and that's great. The, the design language on here is very much finished, very much complete, and it's a really cool limited rendition of an already legendary knife. 
Now, as far as the as far as the manufacturing is concerned, there's no harsh edges that shouldn't be harsh. Everything is well finished. The stone washing on the handle skills are great, and it reminds me of the stone washing that I have on my Strider AR.75, which is to say that you can carry the crap out of this and the knife is going to wear in, not wear out, and the finish is not going to look beat up. It's just going to look more stone washed the more you carry it. And that's a really cool feature of stone washing bead blasted titanium is that you get to enjoy it as close to its brand new fit and finish form you know a month later as you do on day one a year later as you do on day one like that's cool to me and i really enjoy that some people are not a fan of the pocket clip and that's okay they do provide a neutered pocket clip but i'm going to be the first one to tell you if you buy a chavez knife don't replace the pocket clip trust me when i say that it will in fact grow on you the pocket clip is part of his signature and he didn't include a secondary pocket clip because he agreed with people. He included it because there are just some people that don't like skull pocket clips. And I understand that, but I'm here to tell you that that is great. Uh, Ramon Chavez, if you ever watch this video, brother, never change. Please continue to provide the skull pocket clips. It's definitely a signature and I love it. The fit and finish on here, guys, is pretty damn good. It's going to be getting a 9 out of 10. All right, so let's recap. For materials, it got an 8. For ergos, it got an 8. For fidget factor, it was a 9. The lock is an 8. And fit and finish is also a 9. If we add up all of those scores, it comes to a grand total of 42. 42 is a grail, guys. And I don't know if anyone ever doubted from the beginning of this video if I was going to give it a grail rating or not. But I'm here to tell you that this is definitely a knife that I think is display case worthy. It's a knife that carries well. So if you're someone that's okay carrying a knife that costs 400 bucks, uh, yeah, you can in fact carry this and it's going to perform very well. In fact, I think it'd be a little bit of a shame to not carry this knife. Um, but for those of you who don't, I completely understand. Um, this is my opinion. If you look at this knife and you say, oh, I think that should be rated a 35. Well, that's your opinion. Guys, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Are you glad to see Grail or Garbage has returned? Is this a series that I should let fade into oblivion? I did run a poll on my community, and most people actually said that they would like to see more Grail or Garbage. So here it is, back by popular demand. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. I'll catch you on the flip side.